in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed when you see, then you'll be able to make giant strides consistent with that which you have seen. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll jump into our discussion for the night. Hmm. In Numbers chapter 13, the extended reading is 1 to 33, but we'll read the first three verses, then we'll jump to verse 33, just to establish this. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Uh-huh. It says, send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I will give unto the children of Israel, of every of their tribe, of the tribe of their fathers, shall ye send a man, everyone a ruler among them. Verse 3. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. Are we together? Now, go please to verse... Okay, let's see 25. Let's start from 25. 25, just to get the perspective. They returned from searching the land. Remember the promise that God was going to give it to them? 26 now. A quick reading. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and all the children of the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh. They brought bad word to them and they showed them the fruit of the land. Next verse. And they told them and said, We came unto the land whither, let me use this, whither thou sendest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, 29. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the seaside. No land is empty. We're coming there. Caleb, oh dear, watch this now. Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are able to overcome it. Last three verses. But the men that went up said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report. What's it called? an evil any report that downplays God's ability is an evil report they brought an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel saying the land through which we have gone to search is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people we saw all the people we saw all the people we saw, all the people we saw, not all the people there, all the people we saw are men of great stature. Let's read 33 together now. 33. One, two, read. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come out of the giants. And we were in our own hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on we were not in god's sight not in satan's sight 
we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. This was the conclusion of our vision that we were like grasshoppers before them. No matter the only kind of prayer you can pray for this kind of a person is the prayer of mercy. Because this one is already defeated. We were in our own sight. Hallelujah. A man was going into a land for the first time and when he stepped into that land, he met a farmer. The farmer was farming and he said, um, gentleman, good afternoon. The farmer replied, good afternoon, sir. He said, I hear that this land is a wicked land with all kinds of evil things. Is that true? And the farmer kept quiet and said, you are right. And the man walked through. A few hours later, another happy, vibrant man came and said, good afternoon, sir. And the farmer said, good afternoon. And he said, I hear this land is a beautiful place with all kinds of opportunities. The farmer kept quiet for a few minutes and said, you are right. And the man went in. So for every one of them that came with their perceptions, the farmer said, you are right. It is the assignment of vision to select what is consistent with what God has said. In the same land where there was killing and destruction, there was still prosperity and increase. Your vision is an editor. It can edit away that which is inconsistent with the word of God and create a picture for you that equals victory. The seeing eye and the hearing ear. That was a recap of yesterday. Let's get into today's teaching. The warfare dimension of enlargement. Hmm. Light of the world, you step down to, into darkness. Will you open my eyes? Let me see. That's my prayer, Lord. You're the light of the world. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes. Let me see. Can you repeat that part? Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Let me see. Two more times. Let it be a prayer. Open my eyes. Let me see. One more time. Open my eyes, let me see. Amen to that prayer. In the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 8 from verse 22. Jesus. It is true that God gives us territories, physical territories, spiritual territories, financial territories but the bible is very clear as to the fact that there are no empty territories so i am teaching you the spiritual technology that dislodges every enemy that is occupying your territory and grants you access to possess that which is yours are we together even the hearts of men was not empty when jesus came to die he needed the hearts of men but the hearts of men were already full of evil there was something he did to dislodge darkness and bring in light even god was exempted from what i'm teaching you right now war is not a negative um it's not generally an evil concept war is simply a strategy that establishes dominion every time there is a contention over dominion we see that there is war and the idea of war here does not just mean carrying guns and killing are we together one of the strangest scriptures in the bible is and there was war in heaven you would think 
a place with so much dexterity should never have any reason for contention. It says there was war. The Bible is not afraid to let us know that there was war in heaven. So let's read Luke chapter 8 and verse 22. Follow very carefully. I'll read 22 to 25. Then somewhere along the line will continue the warfare dimension of enlargement. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, let us go over to the other side of the lake and they launch forth. Keep that scripture there. The Bible tells us the basis that it was their instinct and their desire to advance. This is Jesus making a profound statement. Thank God for the lands we have conquered, but let us go over to the other side. Are we together now? So understand the basis. This story is founded upon this knowledge. Their desire to go over to the other side. The Bible says, and they launched forth. Next verse. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. A storm of wind with Jesus, the Son of the living God, the very incarnate of the Father, desiring to go to the other side. And the Bible, you thought, where were the angels? Where were the ministering spirits? We're talking about the Son of God desiring to go to the other side. And the Bible says, there came down a storm of wind. Next verse. Let's hurry up. And as they came to him, they awoke him saying, Master, Master, we perish and then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging water and they ceased and there was calm now listen very carefully the bible is saying that jesus was leading the people to the other side there are many things that will not happen to you simply because you are not interested in going to the other side there are many people who are free of challenges it is not because you are free. It is because you are not moving. Hmm. There are certain challenges that are report cards. They are systems of attestation that you are in motion. If they did not desire to go to the other side, there would be no need for them to experience a storm of wind. It is not unusual to have challenges. Challenges many times reveal to you and confirm to you that you are on the path to destiny. It is not always that you are on the wrong path. Now listen carefully. Did you know that when they encountered this storm of wind, the same energy it would take to go back was the same energy it would take to continue. They were confronted by a storm of wind. Now, listen. A storm is made up of two things. Number one, wind. Number two, water. Hmm. Are we together? The wind is the invisible part of the storm. And the water is the visible part. But they all work together to create that storm. When Jesus got up and he discerned that there was a storm, the Bible says the first thing he did was to rebuke the wind because the water was under the influence of the wind. The, the, the wind you could not see was what was making the water boisterous. Now listen carefully. You have to understand the formation of storms. There is always an invisible part to a storm. And that is the part that powers the visible part. There is always an invisible part to the job issue. There is always an invisible part to the health issue. 
there is always an invisible part the Bible says the first thing Jesus did he's teaching us how to rebuke storms that every time you discern a storm don't focus on the water the water is only acting based on what the wind is making it do the financial situation is only acting based on the wind the spirit that powers it and the Bible says Jesus rebuked the wind When he rebuked the wind, then he rebuked the water. And the Bible says, they, the wind and the water ceased and there was calm. Now, the next verse, please. He said unto them, where is your faith? And they being afraid, one that saying to one another, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the water obey him the winds and the water obey him the winds and the water obey him are we together 26 be patient with me i'm building something 26 the next verse now and they arrived hallelujah regardless the wind they arrived that is a powerful statement there and they arrived And they hmm. they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. The Bible uses a very interesting term, they arrived. You would think that were the end of the story. They arrived. 27. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you what happens when you arrive. <laughs> and when he went forth to the land, there met him a man out of a certain city which had devils a long time. I thought they arrived. Listen. haven't gone through the storm of wind the bible even testifies that i arrived i made it and then the next person to welcome me is a man full of devils no clothes no house living in tombs is that how you greet somebody who arrived well Where would I be if you left me? Where would I be? Where would I be if you left me? Now, watch this. Please do not miss what I'm teaching you. Open the eyes of your spirit. Let's go back to the story again and understand what the Bible is dealing with. Let us go over to the other side. Remember? Let us advance and enlarge and make progress. And then they get into the boat. And then they meet this mysterious storm of wind. Jesus rebukes the wind. Rebukes the water there's come and the bible says they arrived and the first person to welcome them was a madman who had been there a long time verse 28 let's rush now when he saw jesus he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice and he said jesus of God most high I beseech thee torment me not 28 for he had commanded and Jesus cried out okay 29 now for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man you notice that every time Jesus is dealing with issues he starts from the spirit if it's the storm he started from the wind if it's this man now it was the spirit 
it says for oft times it had caught him and he was kept bound in chains and fetters he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness 30 and jesus asked him saying what is thy name and he said legion because many devils were entered into him and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep and there was there a herd of many swine on the mountain and they besought him that he would permit them to enter into them and he permitted them watch this <laughs> then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake notice the first people to suffer as a result of the authority of jesus was the business people in that land it meant that they were excelling because of their fraternity with a spirit the moment something started happening to the spirit some people's businesses started going down that means their businesses were thriving the devils went out of the man and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently a steep place into the lake and were choked when they that fed them saw what was done they fled and went and told it to the city and into the country be patient then they went out to see what was done and they came to jesus and they found the man out of whom the devils were departed sitting at the feet of jesus clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid 36 they also which saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed we're reading to 40 37 now then the whole multitude of the country of the gatherings round about besought him to depart from them for they were taken with great fear and he went up into the ship and returned back again listen so what did he do he said let us go over to the other side went through all that labor met a madman healed the madman entered the ship and returned back does that make any sense jesus what are you teaching us here next verse let's finish up now the man whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him but jesus sent him away saying return to thy own house and show how great things god had done unto thee and he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things jesus had done unto him the last verse now and it came to pass that when jesus was returned the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him listen now that you've read the story let me explain to you so jesus begins his mission and says let us go over to the other side are we still together and as soon as they began just help those under the anointing as soon as he began the journey the bible says he met a storm of wind he rebuked the wind calmed the the, the, the water and they arrived and then he meets this man do you know that was the only man jesus went to the other side to meet all that labor to meet one man so that man represented the other side that was Jesus' idea of the other side to meet a madman. Touched that madman and said, I'm done. Now that you are free. And the Bible says that single man, one of the synoptic accounts will say that he published it across a Decapolis, 10 cities. That means there is a relationship between the storm, the spirit, the madman and the deliverance of 10 cities so what you called wind was the same spirit that was in the man and because that man's destiny was the destiny of a deliverer in the mind of Jesus that man was equal to the city and he was what the entire journey 
the entire journey please listen to me listen to me so there are men who are equal nations there are men who are equal nations the same energy god would give in ministering to a thousand people five thousand ten thousand he invests that energy he risked his life and the life of the disciples only to go and meet a madman my question is couldn't he speak from where he was and said madman demons go why did he go through that journey met the madman please listen his desire was to save 10 cities but he discovered that the destiny of the 10 cities were captured in one man that he did not even need to do any crusade now the demons knowing before time they searched for the person who had the mantle of deliverance over that city and they bound him listen carefully that man's oppression was not normal it was in his prophetic destiny to be an evangelist and to save 10 cities and the demons intentionally bound that man as soon as that man for as long as he was bound the decapolis was bound for as long as he was bound is it possible that there are nations that are under siege because individuals are under siege listen i want to teach you something very powerful and i want you to pay attention how can a nation be bound in spite of the fact that jesus is there but one man you see that the demons did not waste their time attacking everybody no could it be that the attack in your life is revealing something why did the devil leave everyone in your family help them please that out of 10 people in a family so this is what has followed your destiny why is it different with me why is it that others get a job and when it is now my turn uh -uh. hear me please listen to me if you do not understand what i'm teaching you there are many mad men you see today not mad in physically mad there are many people in trouble today their trouble is not because they did any wrong any wrong themselves they have entered situations because the realm of the spirit has seen the end time role that they have to play in god's program and so there is a, a launching of all kinds of attacks on them and their families I'm speaking prophetically to you I want you to listen you see there was a man who was born blind and they came to Jesus and said who sinned it is not always a sin problem this is what I'm trying to point out to you who sinned that this man was born blind was it him or his father and Jesus said neither but that the glory of the Lord should be revealed it is not always a sin problem do you know why this is powerful so that when you see people going through storms you don't sit down and conclude that it's because they do not have faith mm -mm. when you see the madman in gadara you do not even know that your own salvation in that city is tied to his destiny hallelujah please hear me there are some of you right now please help this lady I just saw oil being poured on her head. Listen to me. I came this morning to raise warriors. There are people who must know how to walk in the established victory that is in Christ.
let us go over to the next business let us go over to raise our children let us go over to liberate this family from poverty and decadence and the realm of the spirit responds to it things begin to happen in your life that you cannot understand are we together now and then they get to the other side and look at jesus when jesus saved the one person in his mind the city was saved he said let's return that means it is possible for god to come to south africa because of just three people and men of god this is not a minister's conference but let me give you a loving word of caution even if god gave you three members find out which three are those members because you can look at only three members and say i need more not knowing that one member is equal to a whole region in south africa when the mother of jacob and isaac i mean uh, jacob and um, esau they said they were two nations not two men there are men that are not men oh no. there are men that are territories they are systems they are nations in themselves some of you here you may not know why god seems to be meticulous in his training to you your family members can be careless with their lives he will spare them but for you it is because there is a mantle there is an unction there is much that depends on your life there are challenges that never happen to you except and unless you are going somewhere please sit down sit down first corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 9. Please read with me everybody. One, two, read. For a great door and effectual is open unto me. And there are, there are few. You see, I told you yesterday there are certain doors that God does not open because the person who needs to pass through that door is no longer a businessman the person who needs to pass through that door is no longer a preacher you have to be a warrior to pass through that door that door once you enter it is not for business again it's not for preaching again you must master the art of warfare commanding victory there's such an anointing in this place. Ela Shela Barakosia. Help those women. Those two women. Please hear me. It says a great door. Every time you see a great door, don't just rejoice. A great door of business. A great door of ministry a great door of opportunity along with it are many adversaries nobody has to hate you since you are not doing anything nobody needs to talk about you since you are not making any mark it's not because you are nice it is because you are not impactful enough you must be trained to know how champions retain territories are we together now now watch this when it was time for jesus himself to purchase back the hearts of men even though he was the king of kings and the lord of lords let me show you what he went through are you ready jesus himself is at the last supper with the disciples and then they drink of the cup they eat of the bread and your jesus 
is led to Gethsemane. The Bible says when he got there, he cried and cried and said, Father, if it be thy will, I want to make progress. My mission is to see that the entire world is saved. But let me show you the path of champions that many of you do not see. What you see is the glitz and the glamour. But I am showing you the pathway that leads to glory. There is no throne without a cross. Jesus Christ, he prayed three times, take this cup off me. Nevertheless, if it be thy will, not my will, but your will be done. You thought the father would say, I'm so touched. All right, no more death. He still continued. The savior of the world, watch this. The first fatal thing that happened to him was a betrayal from his treasurer. This morning thing again. A kiss that should be a sign of love and intimacy was used as a weapon of destruction. It is not only evil Satan uses to destroy. He can use good things. Managing the pain of being betrayed by someone you invested your resources to. Which is a sign of your trust. And Judas looked at him. But you ate in my conference. Yes. Do you know the pain? And then the same people who came for his conferences were putting a crown of thorn on his head. But I saw you. You ate of that five loaf. That's none of my business. You are going to die. Was taken before Pontius Pilate. He had the power to speak and yet he remained silent. He was whipped. Forty stripes save one. I'm showing you how champions become. This is a sign you may not want to hear. If you are talking of enlargement, please listen carefully. So that at the end of it, you will know whether it's a journey worth taking. And then, that 33-year-old man, you know that he was hung without clothes. The covering there that you see in movies is just because there are people of all age ranges watching. There was no cloth there. Imagine the man who raised the dead. Imagine the man who fed many, now becoming an object of mockery. Many people would have said, I knew he used divination. God had caught him now. Be careful when you conclude on people's journeys. Listen, the only thing you owe people going through storms is your prayer. Don't speak in ignorance because you do not even know what season they are going through. This is intelligence, South Africa. Can you hear me? Do not conclude that just because negative things are happening to people, it means God is not with them. No. Remember, it is not always a sin problem. Sometimes it's a destiny journey. Jesus. And they gave him this huge cross. Many of you are medical practitioners. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And at this point, this man was bleeding every part of his body from head to toe. I do not know the kind of excruciating pain. Pain spiritually. Pain emotionally. Pain spiritually, pain physically, and he carried that cross. Watch this now. As he journeyed on that cross, he looked at the woman with the issue of blood watching him. But I healed you. And she was not even there to help him. He looked at Jarius, but I raised your son. He said, Still go. Crucify him. And among the many who were pointing their hands, he looked at the woman. He looked at the man. He looked at all the people, the tax collectors. And they said, let his blood be on. They were speaking nonsense. Jesus was on his way to Golgotha, ladies and gentlemen. And he was so weak. The Bible did not hide his pain. With tears and blood, he fell. He himself could not even arrive at the cross. Jesus. 
because at that point the Holy Spirit was not with him again the Holy Ghost had left him at Gethsemane he couldn't die not with the Holy Spirit in him because the Holy Spirit represented the life of God he had to leave him that's why he came back after three days now this was Jesus the man watch this now I want to show you the price to win this territory called your heart so that the next time you want more you need to understand that more takes stamina hallelujah and a man called Simon of Cyrene was instructed to come and take the cross I don't have the time to teach you but prophetically Simon of Cyrene was Africa listen carefully Simon of Cyrene was a black man that was the only continent that said I will help you Jesus now, I love every other continent but listen everybody rejected him and one continent said can I help you to get to the cross I may not be able to die for the sins of the world but let me help you that is the reason why that helper is still the continent that will partake of the glory for if you partook of the sufferings of Christ you must partake of the glory that follows it is the reason why this is the season of Africa because we were the continent that identified with Jesus in his death now watch this when Jesus got to that cross you would think the people nailing him haven't seen him bleed they would say listen just leave this man he would die anyway he had to die on the cross to be a cause if he had died on the ground his mission would be aborted because he needed to die on the cross because it is written cost is he that hangeth on a tree that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles to the end that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith that's what the Bible says so they nailed him and he was in pain to make matters worse they were two foolish thieves by his left and right you don't want people speaking nonsense when you are in pain and the other guy who was a thief he now began to speak why are you here I thought you were a miracle worker shame on you you can't even help us and the other guy said you better keep quiet we are thieves we were caught stealing this man is innocent and he said this day you will be with me in paradise watch this Jesus Christ himself hanging on that cross he cried Eloi Eloi Lamak Sabachthani father you have forsaken me you have turned away from me the father looked at Jesus and even the father as compassionate as he is did not allow Jesus to be relieved of that pain of that journey and that warfare and then the Bible tells us that he gave up the ghost life died the king of glory died you would think that was the end of it watch this now Paul is given a picture of what happened after this realm and the Bible says because you see when sinners die they do not go to heaven so since Jesus died as sin he couldn't have gone to the father the Bible says he went to Hades the place of the dead Paul was shown this in his Pauline epistle are we together and when he went there he went in the strength of a man he did not go assisted by the Holy Ghost no he went in the strength of man just like Adam and the Bible says the cohorts of hell were forcing him to bow what is it about bowing bowing means acknowledging authority to acknowledge Satan's authority and the Bible says that when the legal claims of justice was made because he said he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied is that in your Bible the moment the price was paid your Bible my Bible says he made a public show of them triumphing over them now watch this 
when he shook off the demons and the cohorts of darkness he went to Lucifer himself who collected the keys from Adam and he said give me the keys it's in your Bible when he collected the keys he said I am he that was dead and now is alive revelations 1 and I have the keys then Apostle Peter now brought another dimension he went to Hades the place of the dead and the Bible said he preached the gospel to the departed saints who were there awaiting this redemption they died in faith but they never had the opportunity to make that declaration and when they believed him he opened the prison gates and said let's go it's in your bible now watch this i can imagine the whole land quiet women crying others laughing others mocking shame on jesus you wasted three years of our passion we thought you were the one who would dethrone Herod, Caesar to become king. And then one morning, the Bible says, there was a noise, an angel came and rolled away the stone and sat on it. And the king of glory, your king of glory, watch this. You would think when he was done with Satan, that was the end of it. Now it was time to return to the earth, Psalm 24. But the gates refused to open. Those gates and doors you see, because Jesus was about to do something on earth that had never been done. Watch this. When someone leaves the earth, someone in the earth has to call him back. Are we together? That is the law. It has to be a human who calls someone from the realm of the spirit back when Lazarus died remember it took Jesus the man it took Ezekiel the man to call back life into the bones now who was calling Jesus that he was returning back so the gate said no we are not opening there is nobody on earth who is calling you that's why they asked the question who is this king of glory he said lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors that the king of glory may come in now listen please don't miss this don't miss this don't miss this this is an issue of ownership because psalms 24 verse 1 starts by saying the earth is the lord's the fullness so it's an it's a contention for space and ownership watch this please listen i don't want you to miss this The gates said we only open at the command of someone who is in the earth who calls because that was how God created it. But now there is no man in the earth who is calling your name. And there was a response to those gates. He said this man is the Lord strong and mighty. Then he says the Lord mighty in battle. mighty in battle and the gates open and he triumphed he walked back into his domain because if you are really the owner if it is yours you should have the power to go out and come in every other king who claimed land when he went out he could not come in but here is this other king the king of glory he went out of the earth of his own volition and returned back when he returned back he was alive by the spirit now watch this when he resurrected now he could be ascended to heaven so that that coronation service would now happen to him the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool are we together now the bible says that a name was given to him that name means an office this is how he got the name the name was his all the while but now it was his without man it's like you being a professor but because you are a professor alone 
you will strip yourself and go back to the elementary school and start again. But this time around, you do not want the PhD for you alone. You want the PhD together with everybody you love. So that the day they give you a PhD, they see a PhD appearing in every other person's name. That's what Jesus did. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. If Jesus himself was not exempted from battles, that's the point I'm driving. I'm showing you all the things you thought. Is it that Jesus did not pray? Is it that Jesus did not fast? Is it that Jesus did not submit to mentorship? What was his sin that he went through these battles? It was not about a sin problem. It was about a destiny problem. I wish I can tell you that there is no warfare dimension to your destiny. I wish I can tell you that just when you want and if you can think correctly, you will suddenly stumble into wealth and abundance and anointing and glory and influence. But I would be lying to you. There is a price. The price for where you are going. Listen carefully. The price for where you are going is greater than the price you paid for where you are. It is the reason why many people begin to run a marathon when they shoot the gun. Sometimes they are up to 50. Some already know they will not finish. But you find a few people just running, maintaining that tempo. And after hours and hours of running, they are still moving. And at the end, just one person reaches the finish line. And he's done. Let me tell you this. Ask your man of God the storms that he has had to go through in his own life as a testament. I can tell you stories upon stories that will make you cry. This man standing before you is a testament of blood dripping on the altar. Make no mistakes about it. This is a sermon that many people in church, they do not like to hear this. It's why we claim many things that never happen. Because not everything in the spirit is a gift. There are realms that are rewards. There are rewards for enduring. It says that he that endures to the end will receive a crown and a white stone. Hallelujah. Read about Abraham. Do you know what it meant to be barren for 25 years? Then on top of that, your maid now has a child. And then on top of that, your child is born. And when he's 12 years, God says, go and kill him. Not let him be killed. You kill him. The Bible says he got up early. You would think that the barren, the 25 year barrenness problem would be the last challenge Abraham would ever have. No. Abraham, look at the trouble that came with Lot. Look at all the troubles that happened. How about the young man Joseph? What wrong did the young man do? He just went to bed like you did and had a dream. I saw the sun. I saw the moon. I saw 11 stars bowing to me. And the first trouble in his life came from his brothers. They threw him in a well. I wondered what he was saying in that well. Lord, what am I doing here? I love you. When you love the Lord and yet you are in a well. I will tell you what to do shortly. I hope this message is blessing you. Mm. Mm. There are some cups you don't pray to pass over you. You only pray for grace to drink it. But if it is to sit down. Remember the disciples were trying to lobby politically for a position on Jesus' left and right. And the mother came, you know, women came and said, look, my sons are here. Would you consider them? Jesus said, the space is available. But here's the condition. Can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? All the disciples who said, I will go with you. Go and find out what happened to them. Peter, who was in a rush to say, no, I, I won't deny you indeed. 
this thing called destiny and this thing called enlargement is not a Pentecostal issue. It's not just an issue of saying, yes, I will go. It's wonderful. But I need you to really understand. It's the reason why so many people profess it sincerely and yet never come there. It's not because God is unjust. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the world of men. And if you do not build stamina or capacity, there are many doors that God will keep close to help you as an act of his love for you. Because he has vetted you and said, listen, I can't bring this burden on this person. You can't go through it. When they brought Joseph out of the well, I'm sure Joseph would say, this is the end of it. Thank you, Jesus. It's over. Only for him to know that he's been sold for 30 shekels. My brother selling me. Okay, fine. He now goes to the house of Potiphar. And then God begins to bless him. The Bible strangely tells a prosperous man favored of God I'm sure he was comfortable things were already working out now and then here comes this woman are we together yes she comes to him what was his sin he was handsome what if what is good in your life becomes a reason for your pain his dream took him to the well his looks put him to the prison just because I am a handsome man when has beauty become a sin and the wife came and listen carefully they had every evidence against Joseph not every evidence is evidence because clearly her cloth was with him how could you deny now? And he took Joseph to the prison. Now listen carefully. The prison is where both good and bad people meet. Don't conclude on anybody you see in the prison. The moment you find people in a prison, be careful because the prison is the launching pad. Read your Bible for glory. Whether you are Paul and Silas, whether you are Jesus yourself, are we together? Whether you are Joseph, after the prison, the moment you see anyone in the prison, start celebrating. Listen, what I'm teaching you for many of you, you will not need this message now. It's after two years from now, you will look for this tape in a hurry and listen to it one night and say, now I understand. You don't need light in the day. You only lead light in the night. Now please listen carefully. Joseph is in the prison together with other people. If they told you who is the person in the prison is all these criminals. But there was somebody who was a king there. He was about to be literally the possessor of the entire Egypt. And he was there and when the time was full, he had endured. Do you know the test he went through in prison? The test of joy, the test of relevance, the test of value, that he never counted God unfaithful. He saw two people, his own contemporaries, sad. And he said, your countenance, what's wrong? And he began to interpret the dreams. And then the king called one and he said, please, when you go to the king, advocate my innocence and the guy said don't worry i have your back covered he thought it would be after 24 hours they'll say suddenly you are innocent come out two days became two weeks became two months became two years how could i be so close to victory and one man's carelessness adds two more years the guy forgot but did he really forget? No. Prophecy was playing out. When it was time for him to come out of the prison, listen, you do not know why God kept him in that prison. Let me tell you one of the reasons why God kept Joseph in that prison. He did not keep him there. He hid him there. The kind of glory Joseph had, they would have killed him before the day of his rising. What looks like a negative thing? Moses, 
when you find yourself being abandoned in Egypt, you are hidden. You did not miss your path. There are many times God uses negative circumstances. God does not cause evil. But there are many times he can use it as a tool if he finds room to bear his glory. He can hide you in the midst of circumstances that distract you from exposing yourself too early so that you can last until the time prophecy is ready to release you, to announce you. Are we together? And the king had a dream and the heavens were shot over the wise men and the sorcerers and the necromancers. And the wine presser said, I remember my wrong this day. There was a young man. And the Bible says the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. That night, if he had known that would be his last night in prison, that by the next day he would be a prime minister. Do you know if the man remembered to tell Pharaoh about Joseph, they would have brought Joseph out and he would have gone back to Potiphar's house. They would have said all right sorry for everything compensate him no labor for two weeks after that he can continue we know that he was in the prison two years plus the years he spent before his encounter with the wine presser we don't know how long that was but he remained there there are mountains there are challenges that sometimes can last listen to me you must obtain the staying power. The staying power. One time, I was praying for a couple. This is a true story. They were trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And please sit down. When I was praying for them and the Lord opened my eyes. And I saw three children running around. True story. Running around and playing and then the next time they entered a car all of them as a family and they were going somewhere and they had a ghastly motor accident and I saw that everybody died and then I came back to myself I said how many children do you have he said we don't have any children you've never had children yes I said okay how long have you been married maybe eight nine years thereabout never <laughs> at best I've had miscarriages then I understood the vision I said, what you call delay was God preserving a kind of pain from you. Listen, beloved people, there are many times in your life that your pain is your gift. This is a difficult message to understand, but pain can be a gift. If you get to heaven today and you are looking for Jesus, there are many ways to know him. If you use the crown alone, there are many elders who have crowns. Tell everyone to lift their hands. There is a scar that only Jesus has. What was an object of shame yesterday is now the symbol of his glory and royalty. There are times that warriors will be summoned and called and your scar will be the only reason to be allowed to pass through certain doors if you have not gone through certain things even when they call for employment on certain offices they say we need certain experience you must have you had an experience with ABC then they say you can go Joseph came out of that prison not with the plans of remaining i'm sure he was out to just interpret and go back and when he spoke to the king in a moment genesis 40 genesis 41 he was exalted in one day one day he said i am pharaoh and it is only in the throne that i am above you but as far as administration over egypt is concerned it will be at your word and immediately he had the opportunity to marry the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. And he was given great possessions. I wonder what happened the day the exalted Joseph saw Potiphar's wife. Hello, madam, how are you? Hello, sir. 
what you meant for me for evil it was a journey he told his brothers listen before you start your journey to greatness there is a scripture that you must keep at the back of your mind for we know that all things not some things for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purposes I'm not a chef but many of you cook there are ingredients that you do not want to taste before you put in the food it is very inconveniencing when you are peeling your onion sometimes tears will come out of your eyes that is the price you have to pay for being so close to it are we together watch how you make a lovely meal sometimes you add sugar sometimes you add this sometimes you add that and you already know what you are trying to combine sometimes you have to leave certain ingredients under fire for a long time there are others who don't need that much fire then you add this then you add this then you add this then you add this then you close the pot then you open it again and what you have when you put it on a beautiful tray and you serve when people taste it they say my god what is this but find out how it was made there are other things chicken and the rest you have to marinate for hours is that true and live there lonely path all things work together he didn't say all good things all tears all pain they work together for the good of them that love the lord and those who are the called according to his purposes for many years in ministry i had the resources to buy a vehicle but the lord would not allow me to buy a vehicle i was I cannot tell you how many times the Lord made me empty my accounts and I did things that did not make sense there was a time my account was hacked and quite some serious money was taken out of it I went to the bank to meet with the managers and all the people there now, I was a righteous man by the grace of God and I love the Lord I sat there at the meeting and the people look you have all the people who stay close to you they must write a statement you know police and all of that and I said no these people are sincere say well that's none of our business we are doing our work and I sat down there in the midst of all of that you can't imagine how the millions I had lost and then the Lord spoke to me and said son what are you doing here in the middle of a meeting I said, I mean, my money, they just use these guys just. And the Lord said, who owns it? And I said, you are the one I'm a steward. Listen, 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 listen. And he said, if it, if it is true that you've given me everything, get up from that meeting and walk away. God is my witness. I looked at them and I said, all right, thank you for everything. Let the money go. No, 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 no. This is our reputation. I said, listen, this is my money. I have chosen to forget about everything. And that's it. When I walked out of that bank, there was a joy that I could not explain. There are some things you cannot understand until you are in certain situations. That joy. You would think that would be the end of it. Many years ago, it was in the seminary. I was diagnosed of a very strange fungal infection. It started eating up my head. It was a very serious situation. I thought it was just a little, maybe some issue that antibiotics and the rest will solve the problem 
but it metamorphosed into something very serious. I got to a point where they could not allow me sit in front because it was inconveniencing people. No matter how early I came for a program, I would have to go to the back. Now, the students love me, sincere people, but there was a time I had to wait. While people are at the dining hall, I would have to wait. After food is shared, my portion will be brought for me. They prepared a solution that I would have to rub on my head in the morning and then soap or something in the night. If I forgot to put it one day, it will show. Sometimes there will not be water and I would have to stand in the rain. Look, let me tell you the truth. Don't claim titles, so I am apostle, I am prophet. Let your scars. He said, let no man trouble me. Hallelujah. I remember the pain and the discomfort. One time they, I went to the lab and they had to take some sample. It was so painful to culture it. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be? You waited. You waited. You waited. God gave an instruction to go for a crusade. We were just starting. We prayed and we fasted and fasted and fasted. We now went for the crusade, anointed but broke. You would think excelling in one area will cover for the deficiency of another area. Are we together? Preach the gospel with power. There were not many people who were gathered, sincerely speaking. That was the first disappointment, but I was happy at least we were starting. Not more than 50 people. People look at me today and, and say, Apostle, there is a grace upon you that does this and that. Let me tell you how it came. People don't just listen to you. No. You see, we're opening up these cars for you so that you will know when people honor people, it's not human worship. They are not honoring just the human vessel. They are honoring a man who is a compendium of victory, sacrifice, endurance. Hallelujah. Do you know when we got there, the money to pay for the hotel, to pay for the sound, I asked the sound people to come. It was on credit. Imagine you are a sound man and I'm a preacher shouting the faithfulness of God on a crusade ground. Preaching that God can do everything. There are times you have to preach the truth even if your life does not yet have the results. Because you are, you are bound, listen, you are bound by a covenant to be truthful to God's people. Regardless your experience, you must stand for that truth. I'm showing you a price. It's a serious price. I was done preaching when the crusade was over everybody was happy there were bills and bills there was no way they didn't have anybody that you can call and say help me the sound people said listen we came here and I had to plead with them look for someone who got some amount to give them and I promised them just give me a little time you can imagine how do you I mean on one hand, you are celebrating healings and miracles. But on a, where is the God who raised somebody, the, a blind eye opened? How much is the bill that he cannot pay? So when we sing today that God is faithful, for me, it's not a special number. There are many stories that make that song come alive. Let me show you 
from where the anointing flows. The anointing flows through the allowance that your scars have created. Are we together? I remember one time the sound people were sad, they were angry, and they are threatened that, listen, this thing was going to become a police case. I was not a criminal. It was the gospel I was preaching. The apostle you celebrate today by the grace of God, I'm telling you some of the stories. Immediately after that tragedy, God helped us, we paid, and the next year God said, go for a crusade again. And sometimes God will act as if he is not aware, as if he's not aware of everything that happened to you. You failed in a business and you went to complain and say, Lord, I just lost a million dollars, two million dollars. And he says, that's all right. Next week, start again. God for you. He talks to men like he's talking to himself. Hallelujah. But after that time and that season, God opened me up to a realm of glory and grace. I told you for many years, God would not allow me to buy a car. What is it about a car? Oh God, at least to help my mobility. The day I instruct you, I will never forget people will come and meet me with the seed of a car and I'll say, Lord, is this it? And you say, pray for them bless them and let them go back with it what a man of God but the day God began to bless me and to open up doors for me I'm not saying this to brag I hope you are learning I began to see levels of the anointing and levels of grace and the Lord spoke to me and said, because you survived this, all these things and glorified me in it, I will give you the keys of nations. The keys of territories. Listen, there are positions you don't get politically. No. You are enthroned by his grace. And when God puts you there, the nations know. And listen, you are given authority to lift others too. One time, before the Lord would break me into the realm of wealth and abundance, I was praying. Maybe you've heard me share it. Minding my business, interceding for myself and God's people. Suddenly my eyes is open from my room and I see this creature looking like a dinosaur. Giant eyes. One of the eyeballs was like a human head. Two of that. Having a tail that could be detached from itself. And it was looking at me with fierce anger. And he said, so you think you can bring God's people into abundance. I had seen the spirit that sits over the finances of people. This is not the issue of business or buying and selling. When I speak over your life and your finances change, let me tell you where the anointing came from. It didn't just come from claiming. It came from deep spiritual encounters. So, when, when it's time to pray and release mantles and graces, you will do it because of God, but you will also have a bit of respect and regard for the vessels. Are we together now? Not everybody fakes power. Oh, my people, let me tell you the truth. There are people who have met God genuinely. They have a covenant with God and God has chosen to honor them. For their name, for his name's sake. And he has done all of that for the sake of his people. Now please hear me. There are spirits that follow men. There are spirits that follow offices. There are spirits that follow mantles. There are spirits that follow programs. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. We're about to pray now. We're now really talking about warfare. There are spirits that follow men. Once you are in Christ, once you are a human being, 
the devil has a chance over you and he will try to do everything that is their jurisdiction but there are spirits that follow offices that means the day you find your place in destiny the operation of those spirits are activated they don't follow you as an individual they don't care your name they are just interested in the office that you occupy there are spirits that follow mantles you see they don't follow men they follow mantles so when a mantle comes upon you you have to understand how to deal with those spirits i said it yesterday now there are sides to the understanding of things like deliverance and warfare that may not be scriptural but there are sides that is very very scriptural and if you do not understand this in this end time you'll be in trouble i need to say this so we pray hallelujah when jesus went to pray and fast satan left everything on earth and was fasting with jesus too as soon as jesus was done fasting the first person he saw was satan there are some fasts that don't drive him away there are some fasts that bring him who is this person who is this what kind of prayer and consecration is this listen you would think that jesus full of the holy ghost full of the word full of prayer satan would come and be shaking under the anointing and there is satan standing as soon as jesus is done he now looks at him and says all right i've been waiting you are hungry don't deny it you are hungry turn this stone to bread and he said it is written then the bible says that he took him to a holy city and said fall down for it is written he shall keep his angels charge over you they will bear thee up on their wings lest you dash your feet against a stone then the bible says he took him into help her please help her he took him into an exceeding high mountain hallelujah and showed him the glories of the world in a moment of time and said bow to me and i will give you because it was given to him he said get the hands and satan left him for a season that's what your bible says the next time satan would come to him he did not come to him directly again he came to him through the compassion of peter Peter began to talk prohibiting him from dying and he looked and said get it behind me Satan it's still you even though speaking through a compassionate man and he said Peter Satan has desired to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not that when thou art converted strengthen your brethren the next time he would come he came through a man who was already a victim of greed his treasurer you've heard me say it that God is still looking for treasurers his last treasurer disappointed him that space is still vacant so when you say you want to be his treasurer it would take more than financial understanding for him to give you that position because the last one had financial intelligence the problem was his heart so the training of a treasurer starts from the heart hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.